Hey everyone, welcome to Como Live, funded by the Legacy Amendment. My name is Kelsey, and you're joining me today in the Charlotte Partridge Ordway Memorial Japanese Garden. So today I'm going to show you a few interesting features of this garden and some really interesting highlights and tidbits. I think there's always something new to see when you're walking down here. There's a lot of rich history um, and everything in this garden has a purpose. So I really think everything, you know, you can look at everything a little bit closer and a little bit deeper the next time you walk through and visit. So our garden that we have here is a type of Japanese garden called a stroll garden. And stroll gardens became popular in the Edo period in Japan for people to walk through and enjoy. So some features of a stroll garden that you'll notice in ours too include ponds, islands, uh, rocks, and pruned trees as well. So here's a few things to keep in mind as we're walking through and looking at uh, some of the features. Japanese gardens are meant to look natural, but they're not meant to look wild. So they shouldn't look overgrown at all. Everything um, should look manicured and placed. Uh, Japanese gardens also have more of a muted color scheme. So you won't notice any like super bright flashes of color or you know a lot of people come here and ask uh, where are the flowers when they're walking through and um, a Japanese garden is more meant to look a little bit like a miniaturized landscape so it's not meant to look showy and bright and flashy. I always like to contrast the Japanese garden to our sunken garden here at Como. So we have our beautiful flower shows in the sunken garden um, and the Japanese garden is different. It's more of a muted color scheme. Uh, so those are just a few things to keep in mind as we're walking. Uh, but I'm gonna start looking at a few interesting tidbits here. And the first one is actually right next to me here. So this tree that you see, this is a crab apple tree. Uh, if we were in Japan, this would probably be a cherry blossom. Um, however, because we're in Minnesota, our climate is different than what you would find in Japan. We have longer, harsher winters, so we can't necessarily have the same plants that you would find in a Japanese garden in Japan. So this is pretty similar to a cherry blossom in what it represents. So a cherry blossom tree represents the passage of time and the changing of seasons as both trees, the cherry blossom, um, and the crab apple would um, flower in the springtime, have a short bloom season, and then um, lose their flowers. And then of course lose their leaves in the fall as well. Uh, so this is one of the first trees, well, first larger trees that you'll see um, as you're walking down the path in the Japanese garden. But let's go look at some other interesting features here. So something about Japanese gardens, uh, you'll notice there's lots of rocks and boulders, but there's also smaller rocks as well. And every rock here was chosen and placed um, purposefully. So when you look at a rock, you'll notice it has a specific shape and front or face to it. So that might be an interesting color pattern or just an interesting feature that the rock has. But I'm gonna point out some of the smaller rocks because this is one of my favorite areas in the garden. So this beach that you see is called Pebble Beach and it's meant to look like a miniaturized version of a beach leading out to a larger sea. And what I always find interesting or what I learned about this area is that the rocks aren't just strewn about, they're not just thrown into place, but each rock was hand chosen by Masami Matsuda, who was a ninth generation Japanese gardener who created and also helped construct this garden here at Como. So when he was here uh, overseeing and helping with the construction, he visited a gravel pit in Apple Valley and he referred to all the rocks there as treasure. So he hand chose each of the rocks um, and then staff and volunteers here at Como 
placed the rocks here, hand placed the rocks to make this little beach area. And I just love it. I think this is a really kind of small little inlet. It's very peaceful. We have the water lilies here and you always see the koi swimming up uh, to, I just think it has a, a really interesting backstory. All right, so we'll keep moving and check out another feature. So this is the viewing stone, uh, is what it's called in the Japanese garden. And this is pretty much considered the main center or one of the main focal points. This is where if you stand here, you can see almost pretty close to um, the Japanese garden as a whole. So it's meant to, you know, come and enjoy and contemplate, look at the waterfall and the different rocks. I mentioned the sunken garden before when I was talking about Japanese gardens um, as kind of a contrast when you're thinking about this garden and comparing them. Um, so the sunken garden, you stand in it and it has a symmetrical look to it, right? Each side looks the same. You can see the whole garden from one viewpoint. Japanese gardens are different. So you never really see all of the garden at once and the garden looks different from every viewpoint. It's not symmetrical. So um, it's very interesting to, to see the difference um, when you're walking through and to notice when you're in the Japanese garden that you don't necessarily see the whole path as you're walking, you turn the corner and you might notice something completely different. As we're standing on this viewing stone, I want to point out this little island here by the bridge. Um, it's one of the favorites of people to walk over the bridge and walk across the island, but this is what we call tortoise island because if you look closely, it is in the shape of a tortoise. You can kind of see the head, the bigger rock right by me here. And then the pruned scotch pines meant to represent almost like a domed 3D shell. So like I said, everything here has a purpose and was placed uh, very meticulously. And I always find that the tortoise island is an interesting shape to point out for adults and kids alike as they're walking through the garden. But as we end here, I wanna show you one more fun shape on one of the rocks. As long as we don't get doused by a sprinkler here. <laughs> So the last rock I'll point out is this one right here. And a lot of staff and volunteers here refer to this as the sloth rock because it does have the shape almost like a sloth hanging from the tree right there. Um, so each rock has interesting features and each rock does look a little bit different. So the rocks, like I said, were placed and placed with a specific, in a specific way with a specific purpose. Well, I hope you learned a little bit more about the Japanese garden here at Como. And then next time you come and visit, um, see what you can find as you're walking through and take your time and pay attention to your surroundings um, and see what stands out to you as an interesting feature and kind of think about the interesting features that I talked about today. So thank you so much for listening and watching. Enjoy the rest of your day.